In this video, we're going to learn about Newton's law of heating and cooling. And so in the first slide, I'm going to present with you to you the differential equation with an explanation for y. And I'll present the solution to the differential equation, the, basically the formula. After that, I will derive the formula. If you don't need to know or don't care to know, you can skip that. I'll have links in the time codes down below. And I'll go through a nice example of how this can be used. So diving right in, Newton's law of heating and cooling, um, basically in English words is going to say that the rate of change of the temperature is directly proportional to the difference that's not an F between the current temp of the object and the ambient temperature. Ambient meaning um, the temperature around the object. So what that basically means is the bigger the difference in temperature, so like the hotter the oil you put the fries into or the colder the temperature outside is, the quicker the temperature will change. The fries will cook faster, you will get cold sooner. And uh, Algebraically, the differential equation is going to be written dt, dt will equal some constant, some linear um, multiple of the difference between the temperature and the ambient temperature, where t represents current temp of the object little t represents time, however that's measured. k is just going to be some constant. And um, so if the temperature of the object is greater than the ambient temperature, it should be cooling down, but this would be giving a positive value. k will be negative in all of the problems we're going to do because it's going to tend towards this ambient temperature. I guess for that down, t a is going to be the ambient temperature. Ambient has a B, not a P. And one more thing that's going to show up in our solution will be T naught. Let's make that naught better, which is going to be um, initial temperature of the object. And the solution, which is basically what we're going to use, the, the function that relates the temperature to time, will be T is equal to um, the difference between the current temperature and the ambient temperature. Let me make sure to do this correctly. So it's going to be T minus, sorry, T naught minus T ambient e to the KT plus the T ambient. And this should make some sense and we'll see it in the example later on uh, where as T is getting exceptionally large this will be a negative number here so this term will tend towards zero and my object will get closer and closer to the sort of room temperature, you know, oven temperature, outdoor temperature, whatever the temperature around the object is. But at the starting point, when T is zero, E to the zero will be one. And what that's going to ha cause is the negative T ambient and the positive T ambient will cancel and it will be at the starting temperature. So it should make a lot of sense. Next slide, let's prove this or derive this. So here's the idea. And if you don't need to or don't care to or haven't seen differential equations at all before, you might just want to skip this. But we're going to start off with the differential equation dt dt. 
is equal to k times t minus t ambient. And the first thing I'm going to do is separate the variables. The only variable here is the, uh, the only non-differential uh, variable is this t here. So I'm going to move this t back with that t by dividing both sides by t minus t alpha. So I have dt over t minus t, sorry, not t alpha, t ambient. And I'm going to multiply both sides by dt. So I have some constant dt. And now I'll take the antiderivative of both sides. The antiderivative of this will be the natural log of the absolute value of t minus t ambient. The antiderivative of k will just be kt. And I'll have a plus c. To get rid of the natural log, I'm going to put this as a power of e. To get rid of the absolute value, I would have a plus or minus. And this plus c will give me, basically at the end of the day, some constant that could be positive or negative that's multiplied to this e to the kt. I have t minus t ambient. Um, if you don't get that, here's the idea. Okay, so I'm going to have this t minus t ambient equals plus or minus e to the kt plus c. But this e to the kt plus c is really e to the kt times e to the c. Uh, e to some arbitrary constant is some other arbitrary constant, but here's the thing. e to a real number has to always be positive. This plus or minus just accounts for the fact that it could be positive or negative constant. So we get to here. A few things to finish off. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this t ambient to the other side. So t equals a e to the kt plus t ambient. And then to find the initial condition, I will say that uh, t naught will equal t evaluated at time 0. So t naught equals a e to the k times 0 plus t ambient. e to the 0 is 1. I can subtract t ambient. I get t naught minus t ambient will equal a. And from all this mess, I put this a value back into this, and I get my solution. T equals T naught minus T ambient e to the kt plus T ambient. So that's a little derivation of that formula. Let's see how it's used. So we have uh, frozen pizza. I'm going to assume that follows Newton's law of heating and cooling, of course, we all know that the state change from frozen to, um, for a case like the tomato sauce and the, the cheese somewhat, that state change would take energy and so it wouldn't perfectly follow Newton's law of heating and cooling, but we're in math right now where things just seem to work wonderfully, where someone would possibly want 75 watermelons and uh, garbage, so we'll ignore that and just say it follows that. So we put a negative 5 degrees Celsius pizza into a 250 degrees Celsius oven. After 5 minutes, the pizza has reached 83 degrees Celsius. How many more minutes does the pizza need to cook to reach 120 degrees Celsius? So in here, we can see straight away T naught is negative 5, T ambient is 250. And so I get this solution, T equals... Um, negative 5, so t naught minus t ambient, e to the kt, plus t ambient. Now, there's a problem here, so let me clean this up a little bit, so t equals negative 255, e to the kt, plus 250, and that is, what the heck is this k value? And the real world we won't be supplied the k value. I could know what temperature the pizza is, I could know what temperature the oven is, but this k value is going to have some thing to do with the convective currents of the oven, um, how dense the air is, maybe even how much humidity is in the air. So uh, not simple to just give it to you, but it's actually not too hard to find. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this equation and this initial condition, so 5 minutes to 83 degrees Celsius, to know that we have this point T of 5 equals 83. And so I'll let 83 equal negative 255 e to the 5k plus 250. I'll subtract 250 from both sides. Let me do this carefully. So that's going to be um, negative 167 equals negative 255 e to the 5k. I'm going to divide by negative 255 and get 167 over 255 is equal to e to the 5k. I'll get rid of the e by taking the natural log. So I'll get the natural log of 167 over 255 equals 5k. And then I will divide by 5 and get that k will equal the natural log of 167 over 255 all divided by 5 and I'll go to the calculator to get an approximate value of that. So here we go. So I will take the natural log of 167 divided by 255 and divide that all by 5 and notice I get a negative uh, k value. Now, this is not my final answer, so for 8p, I'm going to keep five decimal places for now. And you, the more you keep, the less likely it is that you'll get surrounded for it. So negative 0 0.08465. Let me double check. Okay. And so I get the equation now. T is approximately equal to negative 255 e to the negative 0 0.08465 t plus 250. And to, so that's my equation. To find out when it reaches 120, I'm just going to put 120 degrees Celsius into here and set equal to that. So I will do 120 equals negative 255 e to the negative 0 0.08465 t plus 250. And the easiest way to get a quick numerical solution is just a graph. And it'll be nice to see the graph. So I'll go to the graph and I get negative 255 e to the negative 0 0.08465 x in this case, plus 250. Now when I press graph here, it's not going to be very useful. It's going to be like that. But that's because we're not looking at the right portion of this. So realize that we're talking about getting all up to 250 degrees, but I'm only going up to um, possible 10 degrees. So let me change this up to um, 260 to make sure I cover everything well. And I'll graph this. And now you should see that it's coming up to that temperature slowly. Um, if I wanted to see even more, I could go out to, let's say, 40. And you'll see that it's going to get hotter and hotter, but it's trending. It's asymptotic towards that ambient temperature 250. To finish solving this, I'm going to also plot or graph y equals 120, graph it, and find where they meet. So second calc, intersect, that's my first curve, that's my second curve, and I'll go left to make my guess, and so I have 7.959 But it says how many more minutes, and we already are five minutes in, so that would be 2.959 more minutes. Or if we were just said to the nearest minute, three minutes. I hope this helped out. Feel free to comment below if you do have any questions.